Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 19th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Earth Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm virtually teaching from San Diego, California. Keyloggers are a standard component of malware, and Xavier took a closer look at keyloggers implemented in Python, with Python, of course, being a language that does show up more and more in malware. Xavier used a virus total retrohunt to look for samples that implement keyloggers in Python, and he found a small number of them, a total of nine occurrences only, but many of them were submitted in the last couple months. So let me indicate that the bad guys are actually taking notice and are starting to experiment more with Python keyloggers. Well, in talking about uh, keyloggers recording uh, the user's keystrokes, why not also record sounds with the microphone and images with the camera while you're at? That is apparently what a new piece of malware is doing that is targeting Mac developers. Xcode Spy is what Sentinel-1 called it in its uh, blog post. And it is infecting developers' systems if they are trying to install a malicious module. The legitimate module they're trying to install is called Tap Bar Interaction, but there is a lookalike project on GitHub that is easily mistaken for this legitimate module. And the result is that once you are compiling a project with the malicious version of tap bar interaction. It takes advantage of a feature of Xcode, the Apple developer environment that can execute code while it compiles a project. And this malicious code will then install a backdoor on the dev developer's system. Of course, it's sort of your classic supply chain attack. Once the attacker has a foothold on the developer system, they now are able to modify and corrupt any software that is being created on that developer's system as well. This backdoor may go back to September last year. That's when, according to some passive DNS evidence, the relevant domain names that are used to install the backdoor were first queried. And Virus Total has a submission for the malicious tap bar interaction Xcode project going back to September 4th. In short, be careful what software you trust, what software components you install. If you fell for this particular backdoor, it installed itself as a launch agent for the particular user. And if infected, you may see a file under library launch agents in the user's directory called com.apple.usagestatistics.plist or in some cases, com apple app store check update .plist. So fairly benign names that are easily overlooked if you just quickly look at a list of software that's started automatically. And it looks like Zoom suffers from an interesting vulnerability that may unintentionally leak the content of windows that are not explicitly shared. In Zoom, like in many similar applications, you have the option to either share your entire screen or to only share the content of the window of a particular application. But the problem is if this window overlaps other applications, windows, and if these other applications then get into the foreground. In that case, content from the other window may be shared briefly. Now, this is really just a very sort of short flicker, more or less. So a normal observer would not necessarily be able to make out very much. But if you are recording the video, you would be able to go back to that particular modem and see what content was exposed in the other window. The vulnerability was reported to Zoom back at the beginning of December. It has not been fixed yet, but the company that found this particular vulnerability went ahead now uh, to make it public after their public disclosure deadline expired. 
And well, I don't really see bulletin boards uh, used as much as uh, they have been used in the past, but it's probably worth noting that MyBB came out with an update fixing a number of vulnerabilities that can be used together to execute arbitrary code on the server. Sort of interesting how these uh, vulnerabilities are chained together. First of all, there's a cross-site scripting vulnerability that can be exploited by sending a private message to an administrator and then the cross-site scripting vulnerability can be used to execute a SQL injection vulnerability that requires authentication that in turn then leads to remote code execution. So it does not require a lot of user interaction to exploit and exploit code is already available. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.